42 from Wade's um, chapter 3. This is the 7th edition textbook. And we're asked to draw a Newman projection for this 3-methylpentane about the C2, uh, C3 bond. So uh, first we can just draw out um, a line drawing of this structure. So uh, there's pentane. It has five carbons. And then... Um, Here's the methyl group at the uh, carbon 3. Now, we're asked to cite or view down um, this bond here. So what you want to do is draw wedges and dashes on carbon 2. And carbon 3. So um, this is a CH3 group attached to the carbon 2. And then at carbon 3... We've got a methyl group we've got a hydrogen and we've got um, an ethyl group now you could abbreviate the um, methyl group as me and the ethyl group as et and that might be easier so anyways we'll um now look down this bond, the C2-C3 bond, and we will draw our starting um, conformation. So the front carbon is this dot. We see a methyl group pointing down, and we see two hydrogens coming off to either side. On the back carbon, we would see an ethyl group pointing up, And we would see a hydrogen pointing to the bottom left and a methyl group pointing to the right. Now, if we're interested in drawing most the most stable conformation, let's rotate this 120 degrees. So we want to take this ethyl, move it here, this methyl, move it here, and this hydrogen, move it here. Okay? This uh, diagram is looking a little messy, so I'll just delete um, what I just noted there. And so if you keep the front carbon steady and do just what I said, move the methyl to this location, the methyl over here, and the hydrogen up here, and do that one more time. Remember, the most stable conformation is going to be a staggered conformation, and it's only possible ever to draw three staggered conformations for um, your Newman projections if you look down one of the bonds. Now that we have our three potential isomers for the staggered conformations we want to evaluate them for strain so these two methyl groups they're in pro close proximity and experience a steric strain these two methyl groups experience steric strain this methyl group and ethyl group experience steric strain and here we have um, an ethyl group and a methyl group experiencing steric strain so we have three interactions, two interactions, or I'm sorry, I should really just say two interactions between three groups, one interaction between two groups, or one interaction between two groups. So this one's out. This is going to be not our answer. Now we have to decide between these two conformations on either side of the page here. Um, this is two methyl groups interacting. So these are smaller groups, which means that it's going to have less strain because the smaller groups have smaller electron clouds and bump into each other less severe, so there's less strain. And a, a ethyl group is larger than a methyl group, so essentially this is a larger group, and that's going to be uh, more strain. So the methyl-methyl-Gaussian reaction is not as bad. So 
Um, this is going to be the final answer for this question. Now let's do part B of this same problem. We want to cite down the C3, C4 bond of 3,3-dimethylhexane. So let's draw hexane. That's six carbons. Carbon three is going to be here, and we want to draw two methyl groups. Carbon four would be here. Now again, you want to draw the wedges and dashes on carbon three and carbon four. So let's start out by drawing carbon three. There's a methyl group, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. This group right here with two carbons is an ethyl. And each one of these guys here with just one carbon, as we know, is a methyl group. And we're going to abbreviate those ME and ET just to simplify things. Carbon 4 has two hydrogens, which are not drawn in the line drawing. And then it has uh, two additional carbons on it. Those two additional carbons can conveniently be abbreviated um, ET for the ethyl group. Now we want to cite down the bond here and draw the Newman projection from that. So the front carbon, what do I see? I see an ethyl group pointing uh, straight up and I see two methyl groups. Okay, on the back carbon I see an ethyl group pointing down and two hydrogens. Now to draw the other two most stable conformations that might be possible candidates, I want to rotate this 120 degrees to make the other stagger conformations. The way I normally do things is keep the front carbon steady and I rotate the back carbon and I usually rotate the back carbon clockwise just to always be consistent with the way I move things around. So these are kind of like gears. Uh, if you rotate 120 degrees, everything kind of moves over. And then let's do this one more time, and then we'll analyze what we have. So again, keep the front carbon remaining fixed. back carbon we're rotating clockwise 120 degrees okay and that's what I've drawn so now we want to think about which ones not as bad as the other ones so we begin analyzing strain so this has a methyl ethyl gauche interaction a methyl ethyl gauche interaction okay so this has two methyls clashing with ethyls. In this structure here, we have a methyl clashing with an ethyl. And we have an ethyl group clashing with a different ethyl group. So we have one of those. And we have one ethyl clashing with an ethyl. Okay. And this problem is to be answered qualitatively. We don't need to add the strains up. So here we have an ethyl ethyl and an ethyl methyl. So those are the only two sources of uh, gauche interactions in this molecule. So we've got one methyl clashing with an ethyl. That's right here. And one ethyl clashing with an ethyl. That's this one up here. So what do we do? Well, remember, the smaller groups have smaller steric strain, potentially. Another way of saying that is bigger is better. Um, so here we have two small, relatively small methyl groups clashing into ethyl groups. Here we have an ethyl ethyl, so that's not good. And here we have an ethyl ethyl. That's not good. Um, so this still has significant strain to it, but it has the least amount. So we're going to highlight this.